Well, hello there. I have a great discussion topic for you today. I know that some people out there are feeling so discouraged. You feel like you're at your breaking points. You feel like you just cannot take any more. You feel like you are just at the end of your rope. I understand. Trust me. I understand. We have been going through some situations and circumstances over the past few months and even over a year. And you know what? If this is you, I want you to stay put because I have some information to share. So welcome back. I have some juicy, juicy information to share with you today. So thank you so much for joining the community today. I'm glad you tuned in to this video. You will be blessed. I promise you. Uh, you may be feeling downtrodden. You may be feeling beat up. You may be feeling at your last rope at the end of your rope, like you just can't take no more. Well, if that's you, I'm telling you, this is so good today. I have a scripture that is so powerful that it will deliver you from what you're going through. So this word is just going to encourage you today. And it's going to strengthen you and it's going to fortify you and it's going to help deliver you and strengthen your faith. So let's get right to it. This scripture today comes from Psalms 46 verse 1. And it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Do you find yourself or your family in any type of trouble today? I do. My family is going through trouble today and has been for weeks. So let me just talk about experience. You know, I'm qualified to talk about this scripture to you today. And I want to encourage you today. And let's just talk about refuge. What does it mean that God is our refuge? Refuge, by definition, says shelter or being safe or sheltered from pursuit, from danger, or from trouble. Now, if you just sit there and meditate and think about that for just a moment, to be safe from pursuit. Now, we already know that there's a devil loose that's pursuing us with everything that he has, every force that he has. He's pursuing us to destroy us. He's causing trouble and danger, dangerous situations. But get this, we have shelter from all of that. We're safe from all of that because of our God, the most high God, the almighty God. He has our back. He is sheltering us. He is keeping us safe from all of that. And he is our strength. Strength, by definition, it means to withstand great force or pressure. It means to be mighty, impenetrable, can't even penetrate. <laughs> Get a revelation of that. <laughs> the enemy can't even penetrate. God has a host of angels, holy angels, warring angels 
The Bible talks about chariots of fire. <laughs> Only a third of the angels fell from heaven. Only a third. So that means that two thirds of the angels remain. The holy angels that fight on our behalf. Angels are assigned to you. You got angels assigned to you. It's a fixed fight. I'm telling you, it's a fixed fight. Angels are a hedge of protection around you. They are all around you. God had to go, uh, the devil had to go to God to talk to him about being able to reach Job, to test him, to sift him. So that means that he couldn't reach him. He couldn't penetrate. So you have forces, unseen forces, angels, angelic hosts fighting on your behalf, covering you, bearing you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Take courage in that. Strength, mighty. God is our strength in our weakness strength god withstands great force if you feel weak and you feel beat up by the devil by your situation by your circumstance by whatever is going on god is mighty he can handle the pressure and he is upholding you he is your strength take courage in that isn't that good? Doesn't that just minister to you? Doesn't that just encourage you? Doesn't that just make you feel like you can make it through anything? I'm telling you, this is a powerful scripture to declare over any situation and circumstance. We haven't even gotten through the rest of the scripture yet. We're just at the beginning of the scripture. This is so good. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble, very present. That means right now, in the present, in the present, in this moment, when you're going through what you're going through right now, when you're feeling at the end of your rope right now, when you feel like you don't know what to do right now, when you feel like you don't know which direction to turn right now, he's a very present help for whatever you're going through right now. I'm telling you, this is some good stuff. And we need this right now. The enemy is giving it everything that he has. He is pulling out everything but the kitchen sink. Matter of fact, he probably pulling out the kitchen sink. You might feel like he done threw the kitchen sink at you. I, I understand. I understand. And you know, God is with you always. God has promised that he will never leave nor forsake you. That is his word. That is his word. He said, I will never leave nor forsake you. He is always there. And I promise you the situation is working itself out. I promise you that. You may not see the intricate details. You may not see what's going on behind the scenes. You may not see or know what God has arranged, rearranged, set up, put in the path, fixed. You, you may not even see it. But I promise it's working itself out and this too shall pass. It's not going to last always. So during this time, uh, how is God helping us? He's helping us through other people. So that's why it's important who you have in your inner circle. I tell you, as the enemy was, you know, very busy this week uh, in my household, um, it was important, the people that was in my circle, you know, they just swooped right on in with scripture, with Bible study messages 
of encouragement. They girded me in prayer. They lifted me up in prayer. They prayed with me. They just encouraged me. You know, um, they, they were just there holding me up. Holding me up. Holding me up. They would not let me fall. They would not let me go. So ask yourself, you know, who in your circle will hold you accountable to remaining steadfast in the word? Who is that person or persons that are in your circle that you can turn to? That even, even if you don't turn to them, they just notice that you're different, that something is going on. Something's not right. Something's going on. And they'll just begin to minister to you. They'll be like, uh, you came up in my spirit today. Something's going on. Or you just don't look right. It's all up in here. You just don't look right. What's going on? I I just been thinking about you and I just... I just want to encourage you. I just want to call you, see how you're doing. I just want to, you need anything? You know, what's going on? I got an encouraging word for you. Let me pray with you. You know, if you don't have anybody in your circle like that, then you need to get somebody or somebody's. It's good to have more than one in your circle. It's important who you hang around. Because strong pe iron sharpens iron. Strong people help keep you strong. People that are about the father's business, that are about growth and development, that are about promotion, increase, blessings, favor, goodness, meekness, all of the blessings of the Lord, encouragement, strength, capability. All of this goodness, you need people like that in your life. If nobody's challenging you to be accountable to the word, to strengthen you, to encourage you, to edify you, to lift you up, to help you up, help you get up when you fall, lead you in the right direction, help you promote, get promoted help you with your career, help guide you with some wisdom, some knowledge, some understanding to help you see yourself um, in a better way when you can't identify yourself as who you were created to be. I mean, all of these things, it's important. If you're just hanging around people that's pulling you down, not encouraging you, don't have an encouraging word, don't know what to say, you know, don't have anything going for themselves and, you know, they're pulling you down, you need to get in some new circles. You need some people that can encourage you and help you and strengthen you and bless you because we all get weak sometimes. We all need somebody to help us sometimes in our life. There's not one person on this earth that is you know, just mighty and, you know, got it together and just perfect all the time and just, you know, perfect for lack of a better word. Nobody is perfect all the time. We, we have flaws, we have weaknesses and we have issues and we need to lean on each other. We need each other. So God is helping you through other people. That is so important. You also need to make sure that you're in a church congregation that's teaching you the word of God. A good Bible-based church worshiping with other believers, being taught the word of God is so important. It's so important. Also, how is God helping us through trouble? Have you considered fasting? I went on a fast uh, this week. 
As a matter of fact, it was last week. I went on a fast. I did. And uh, it was beneficial to me. Now, if you have not considered fasting or don't know what fasting is, fasting is where you're giving up or depriving yourself of something so that you can give more attention to God. So you can give more attention to God through prayer and through the word, through meditation, so that you can hear from God. So you're eliminating distractions. So when I say depriving yourself, a better word would be eliminate the distractions in your life. You know, some distractions, and it just depends on the individual as to what it could be. Some people may be on social media. Um, if they're up 10 hours in the day, they might be on social media six hours or seven hours. Social media could be a distraction. Television, they could be sitting in front of the TV three to four hours a day. TV is a distraction. Um Food can be a distraction because food can control you. Um, you. You can't even say no to your favorite dessert or, you know, your favorite food. You know, you know, you don't need to eat it. You're not even hungry, but the food controls you and you have to have it. That's a distraction. You're distracted. Um, you're being controlled by the food you know whatever your distraction is who knows what it is examine your life where is your distraction um what could you stand to eliminate you know during this time you know even set a time you know it could be three days it could be one day it could be half a day um but that's up to you and you eliminate that distraction and you spend more time with the Lord in prayer, in reading the word, in meditating. Um, you just get before him and fellowship with him so that cutting out that distraction, now you can hear what God is saying. How is he leading, guiding, and directing you in regards to the situation that you're in or your family is in, what you're facing you know, you, you need direction on what to do. What are the next steps? How do I get out of it? What do I do? I need peace. <laughs> your, your emotions may be all over the place. You may just need peace in the midst of whatever is going on. You may just need peace. You may need direction. You may need wisdom. You may need to know what to do. Um, the list goes on, but you know what you need. You know exactly what you need and you seek the Lord for that what you need in that moment. You may need strength in your weakness. You, you may just be weak right now. Have no strength in you. No, no, no fight. You hear people say this. I have no fight left. All the fight is gone. I can't fight another fight. Okay, so you need God to be your strength. What is it that you need? Examine what you need. Go on a fast. Get closer to the Lord. Hear from the Lord. And I'm telling you, it is so beneficial. When you hear from God, <laughs> it will change everything. I'm telling you, it will change everything. It will change that situation. It will change your outlook on it. And I'm just telling you, get a revelation of this scripture. You just, you just meditate on this scripture. Today, just spend some time meditating on this scripture. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in a time of storm. God is ready to help you. He's here to help you. He is your father. You are his child. He loves you. He don't want to see you destroyed, pursued, penetrated, destroyed. No. So I just want to take this time to pray 
And I just thank you again so much for tuning in and getting this good word, you know, while you're going through this trial and this tribulation and you're fighting this fight. We are fighting this fight. We're going through it together and we're just going to continue to go through. And I just want to take this time to pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, bless your holy name, God. You are such a good father. You are such a good father. We bless your holy name. We magnify you, Father God. We just thank you so much for being our refuge, being our strength, being our portion, being our help in the time of a storm. Thank you that you never leave nor forsake us, Father God. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Lord God, that we'll continue to be fervent in prayer, Father God, seeking your face, declaring the word of God over our situations, taking authority over our situations and circumstances. We bind Satan right now. Jesus has already disarmed Satan and delivered us and set us free, Father God. By the blood of the lamb, Father God, we are delivered from distractions, Father God, from depression, sadness, suicidal thoughts, Father God, hallelujah, from rebellion, Father God, from health issues, legal issues, legal problems, Father God, from fear, from worry, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We are delivered, Father God, from the hand of the enemy and every attack that he has put before us, Father God. I thank you, Lord God. And we will be found in peace, Father God. We exchange our words for your words, Father God. We exchange our negative, fear-filled words with words of affirmation, words of deliverance, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Words of victory, Father God. Words of peace, joy. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We are delivered and set free today, Father God. We will no longer lean to our own understanding of our situations and circumstances, but in all our ways, we'll acknowledge you, God, that you will direct our path, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you, Lord God, that we are victorious in every situation, every circumstance, Father God. And we just thank you for the power and the victory that you have given us to overcome Satan and every power and every principality that has come up against us, Father God. And I just thank you, Lord, that your angels are bearing us up. Your angels are a hedge of protection about us, Father God. Your angels are watching over us. They're assigned to us, Father God. And I thank you, Lord God, that we are delivered no matter what we face. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil for you are with us, Father God. Thank you so much for thy rod, thy staff shall comfort us. You shall prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemy. You anoint our head with oil. Our cup runs over and we know that surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, knowing that we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, Lord God. And we abide in the secret place of the most high under the shadow of the almighty God. You are our refuge. You are our portion. You are our strength. You are our help. Thank you for our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are victorious through him, Father God. And we'll forever give you the praise, the honor, the glory for what you've already done, what you are doing, and what you will do, Father God. Hallelujah. And we just thank you, Father. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and we declare the victory right now. Amen. Thank you, God. Bless your holy name. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you need to reach out to me for anything, my email is TamikasNuggets at yahoo.com. Thank you for being a part of this community today, and I will see you next week. Thank you.